If you're watching this on counsellingtutor.com or a floaty by on YouTube, a very warm welcome. My name is Rory Lees Oaks and in this presentation we're going to look at an introduction to Petruska Clarkson's Systemic Integrative Psychotherapeutic Model. And this is a response, this video is a response to a few requests I've had um, over the last few months on the YouTube channel and also on Facebook, in particular Surinder. So if you're watching Surinder, this one's for you. Let's have a look at Petruska Clarkson's biography. She was born October the 31st, 1947 in Pretoria, South Africa, and she died May the 21st, 2006 in Amsterdam. Um, she was 58 years old. Sadly, she took her own life. Her nationality, as far as I can ascertain, was South African. Her fields were integrative psychotherapy and in particular Gestalt. Her influences were Fritz and Laura Pearls, two well-known and very famous names in the world of Gestalt therapy. Her key idea was systemic integrative psychotherapeutic model. That's really one of her key ideas. And her legacy, well, key contributions to the philosophy of psychotherapy. It can't be understated that Petruska Clarkson was a person who integrative, integrated the world of philosophy with psychotherapy. She was also um, a big voice in European Gestalt. She presented lectures and wrote papers on Gestalt therapy. Um, so she really was a really big voice and she was a professor. She was a professor, Petruska Clarkson. So her idea is based in, inter, in, in the intersubjective relationship. That's the where the idea is based on. And an intersubjective relationship between two people is, has three components. One is shared emotion. It's sometimes called attunement in psychotherapy, or we, in counselling we call it empathy. It's, it's compatible. They're interchangeable, I think. Shared attention. Um, both people need to be paying attention to each other and present. And finally, shared intention. And in therapy, I guess that's the therapist wanting to help the client resolve issues in their life and the client wanting to have those issues resolved and, and finding ways of working with that. So to have an intersubjective relationship, those three components need to be in place. And Clarkson built on this idea by talking about a systemic integrative psychotherapeutic model. So she talks about the working alliance, the transferential and counter-transferential, the repatriative or reparenting, the person to person, and Martin Bruber, who was a philosopher, called it the I thou. Carl Rogers would have called it the core conditions and building a therapeutic alliance. And finally, the transpersonal, and we'll, we'll come to these. We'll explore each one of these in turn. So the working alliance, well, there's going to be at least five relationships all going on at the same time in therapy. The therapeutic alliance is where we make a contract with the client, make sure that time, place and money are taken care of, that the client is motivated and responsible. All the practical things which have to be secured if the process is to be protected. So this, right at the beginning, is about building a foundation. Uh, a foundation that should the therapeutic alliance get rocky, this foundation will hold it together and, and make sure it can continue. And it's like with any alliance, whether it's in a professional or personal life, it's, it's a soft way of saying rules, isn't it? So it could be things like cost. It could be things like roles and responsibilities. It could be stuff around holidays, breaks, um, the modality of therapy. could even be about the client's working style. If you have a client who's very visual, maybe working in a very visual way to help the client gain an idea of where they're at. Um, and also, I guess, financial. If, 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 a, if a therapist is charging and being very clear in the contract what that charge is and how much it's going to be. Also, I think equally importantly, it's about how many sessions you can offer. The transferential and the counter-transferential. Let, let me put it this way. Have you ever met a brand new person in your life, someone you've never met before, and within a few seconds, 
you feeling uncomfortable or maybe feeling irritated in the presence or maybe feeling gushes of love. It's very possible that what you are experiencing is transference. Transference is the mental process in you that goes back into your past and takes away from a previous relationship certain influences and brings them into a new relationship. So it's very possible that you could be you could be working with someone and you feel yourself irritated. It's possible that you're not being irritated with them. It's possible that actually they are reminding you of somewhere somebody in your past that you were irritated with. And that happens all the time. And you, the person doesn't have to look like them. It could be a turn of phrase, something they say, something they wear. Literally anything can trigger what's called transference. The, 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 the idea that we go in back in our past and bringing things from past relationships into new relationships. And that can sometimes be dangerous because if you're doing that, you're thinking about the person in front of you, this new person, not as a new person who you're exploring the relationship with, but as the person in your past who you're thinking about. And what can happen then is you get what's called counter-transference. So it may be then you start reacting to this new person in your life as you would react from the person in your past. And, and again, that's dangerous. And it works both ways. So it could be the client sees you as someone from their past and starts getting irritated with you and then starts to project onto you. And sometimes and projection is where they might say, I think you're thinking this and I think you're thinking that. Well, the way to deal with that is to be open and honest and say, I, I just wonder if I remind you of anybody. And that can, that can happen. It can happen. So transference can be quite damaging to relationships where you're bringing your past into the present and then acting that out with a new person, including the way you'd react to the person in the past. One of the other ideas in this theory is the repatriative or reparenting. Um, the repatriative relationship is where the therapist has to be willing to be what the client's fantasy needs. So it might be that the client needs to take you, figuratively speaking, not physically, and, and keep you in their mind to support them. And this could be things like when a situation is difficult for them, them moving into a position where they say, I wonder what my therapist, how my therapist would deal with this. Or thinking about how the therapist has nurtured and been and been empathic to them. So it's almost like carrying a little bit of the therapist around. Um, and the therapist's role in this can they might be a mother, a father, a sibling, a teacher, or another authority figure. And the the danger is is that is that although this can be a good thing for clients that they've got something to sustain them, a part of the therapist to sustain them while they're going about their day to day lives. It might be that if if it might be they regress back to a child state when they're with you, and sometimes I see that in, in my um, practice or have through the years where a client goes back into a very child state, and that has to be discussed and, and very gently talked about, so that you can bring them back into an adult state or or in the person centered idea an organismic state where they're accessing their their adult selves. Um, and when we talk about fantasy, we're really talking about emotional support. We're not talking to any great depth about them uh, being attracted to you, although that can happen. But we have to be willing to take that chance in the relationship, this theory tells us, the chance that the client may need us in different ways. And it's how we deal with that that's fine. The other thing I'd say on this is that as the therapy comes to an end, the client will replace you with their own um, emotional regulation so they'll take you away and they will replace it with their own emotional regulation in ta we call that the parents uh, sorry we call that the adult ego state but in um, person sensor therapy we call that the organismic valuing process where they can trust their own thoughts and needs and they don't need the client like the jiminy cricket character on the shoulder being there to support them the person-to-person -person relationship, Martin Buber, who was a philosopher, talks about the I-thou relationship. And this is a real relationship, 
and it's where the therapist is authentic, relating to the client in an IU way, not an I it fashion. And I'll give you an example of that. When I go to my dentist, who's a really good dentist, if my dentist is listening, um, and he's really kind and he's really thoughtful and doesn't hurt me, which is great because I don't like the dentist, if I'm really honest. I don't think very many people do. Um, the relationship I have is a is a patient professional relationship. I am her patient. That's fine. That's what I'm contracted for. She's not my therapist. But that's very much it. It's about the mechanism of her repairing, filling, removing, in some cases, my teeth. It's not based on any other connection. That's the contract we have, and that's the contract we're both happy with as far as I I'm concerned. With therapy, it's very much about having an I I I U relationship where you are stepping to one side of being professional, the professional facade, and really really working with the clients and really bringing an essence of yourself in there. Um, it's particularly important with humanistic work such as person-centered therapy where the core conditions are offered by the therapist to the client. So if, if any of you listening have had therapy, you'll know what that feels like, hopefully, where the, where the, the therapist is really trying to build a hum, humanistic relationship, an IU relationship, as opposed to a doctor-patient relationship. And finally, the transpersonal relationship. Now, Clarkson herself thought this was very difficult to describe. Even if it was her own theory, she thought it was very, very, very difficult to describe. I guess... Um, it's harder to define in absolute terms, but it can include an expansion of consciousness, which can be spiritual or healing. And I'm going to separate faith from spirituality. They, they can be compatible, and, and they sometimes are. But being spiritual is a feeling of connectedness with yourself and others. And I think one way I could get this across is the feeling after you've gone to a concert or enjoyed a really special evening with friends if you've gone to a concert, I've been to concerts, and I've felt a real strong connection with everybody who was in the stadium or in the field, a real spiritual connection that can't really be measured, and that's what that is. And it's for the therapist to acknowledge that in the client, not to kind of analyse it or challenge it or try and quantify it. It's, it's to accept and, and in some elements celebrate that celebrate the client's feeling of connectedness with the wider world and wider humanity and um, this is a great thing in therapy because when clients do this they're beginning to really access their own emotional regulation and feel part of humanity again and for some clients they feel so cut off from it so quite a hard one to get across and I hope that I've explained this in a way that if you're doing an essay on this you can you can manage to put it down in, in words. If you want further information, well, if you're watching on YouTube, if you click the um, tab below, um, I'll put some links in to different aspects of Clarkson's ideas. And why not visit us on counsellingtutor.com um, to see all the other things that we do and join our learner forum. And if you want to know where that is, well, it's in the description tab at the bottom of the red arrow below this presentation. And finally, as always, thank you for watching.